All right, I'm gonna talk to you guys about some of the things, the good, the bad, the ugly of these uh, inflatable spray booths. Uh, I don't want to discourage you from getting one. I think that they're pretty good, uh, but you don't want to have a false sense of what it's gonna do and what it's not gonna do. So I'll kind of go over those things. Let's take a look inside. It's gonna be a little noisy in there, so keep that in mind because I got the fans running. Keep it on. So yeah, you can get one of these things. You can paint your car yourself or maybe your shop and you're just looking for, you don't really have a spray booth and maybe you've been working inside one. Um, it would work really well inside a building um, because you don't have to worry about it blowing down in the wind. So if you have real high winds, that can be an issue with this thing. Uh, it it has to be pretty high wind, okay? So, like for instance, you know, I, I had like 10, 15 mile an hour winds, 10 mile an hour winds, and I just had these weights, and I just used these uh, concrete stepping stones in the corners, and then I had some bricks in the corner. And what you want it not to do is blow the legs this direction because what will happen is if it if the wind blows too much if they'll stay where they are it'll just sway back and forth a bit and it won't bother you but um, if the leg kicks inward it will kink and then the whole thing will come down and that, that you don't want that to happen while you're painting so if you're in an area where you're thinking about maybe you have some more wind a good way to do it is just throw weights in the corners and that will help it air up easier too. So what I'll do is, uh, when it, while it's airing up, I'll walk inside, I'll put weight over there, I'll shove that in and over there, and it'll just kind of, then once it has the weights in the corners, it'll air up and down by itself without any problems. Um, the other issue you have with these is there isn't that much airflow at least the one I get. So it gets a bit of overspray on the sides of it. And now the the opposite side of that is that if you don't have that, you're getting overspray all over your floors, all over your shop, other cars you might have in there or whatever, you know. So having it contained in here is much better. Uh, when you do shut the door, it will ventilate out these vents here and you can put filters in there so it will but the airflow is very slow so if you're running like a good spray gun and you have the pressure turned up all the way so if you're, let's say you're running a Techno Pro light or you're running a uh, Iwata Supernova for your clear coat um, you're gonna get a pretty good sized cloud with the pressure turned up to 28 pounds. And it's gonna get pretty hard to see towards the end of each coat. So that's another issue with it. Um, again, it's better than just sticking a bunch of fans in your garage. It definitely works better than that. But it does not work the same as a spray booth. Um, the other issue you have with this one, some of them have more uh, clear in the side. Everything has a blue cast to it, obviously, because this is blue. Um, but your lighting is not the best it should be. It's not as good as like a spray booth where you have lights on the sides shooting at it. So it's a little bit hard to see when you're painting like the sides of your car. So like on this thing, I got a bit of peel in it on the sides. At the top, you look, I didn't really get much of anything. It's pretty smooth. So, because I was a little more cautious because I couldn't see the best on the sides. Where in a spray booth, you've got side lighting and it just, it just is a better lighting system. So again, hopefully you can hear me, but the zippers on some of them are really cheap. Like on this one, the zippers are kind of cheap. This one's made out of sail cloth. Just the same thing that sails are made out of. So if you can see, there's a little bit of wind right now. 
and it just sways the top of it just sways a bit it's really not that bad it has to have like 30 mile an hour or more before it starts to have issues and then again all I do is just put more you put more of these down again it'll sway it'll sway like this but it won't kink as long as that leg doesn't kick in it won't kink and then if it doesn't kink it won't fall down so again the zippers again I was sorry I was just get saw that wind coming up a little bit um, the zippers again are kind of cheap so if you look for one of these you know I don't know don't pay too much for one honestly uh, I paid like 1500 bucks for this one I've seen ones for like less than a thousand now on eBay and maybe those will work out I don't know uh, but the zippers are kind of cheap so they skip and stuff but the cool thing is this company well I don't know which company it is uh, has more than one zipper on here so that they kind of know that it's going to jack up so that you can zip the other one the other way and you know go back and forth until it closes but that's kind of a pain when you're painting and you're kind of going in and out the door so I just painted and I just left this open another thing is you'll notice like this one rolls upward and if you use some of these spring clamps like that to hold it hold it open that kind of helps I painted a van in here I had to roll it up a little higher that was a little harder to do and again because of that because I was worried about the wind I didn't have that many of these stones uh, I left the door open versus shutting it um, and enough dissipated that between coats that you know you had a fresh room uh, versus painting in a garage or something like that you can't see you know and it takes a lot more time to ventilate another problem you have is it seems like a lot really wide when there's no car in here but when they put the car in and you're trying to walk around it it's just barely enough room to be able to paint so if you have a larger car or a big truck uh, it's really hard to walk around it and actually paint you end up being sideways with your gun reaching out like this um, it's a little hard to it's really hard to see at that point um, with a with a big like bigger vehicle but it will work you know you could get through it yeah it's it's better than painting in the garage still again it's a better than that I think this one's 12 feet wide and I think what they do is they they calculate the feet wide by the outside of the building instead of the inside so yeah, I'd say it's just a little over 10 feet from there to there and it's just barely wide enough to paint a larger vehicle so this one's a 26 foot watt long and when I was painting the Volkswagen in here that little Gia it came out to about right here so I had all this room over here which if I had the hood and everything off of it you could lay it all out so having the 26 foot wide long one is really good to have so you'll see some that are like 20 feet so you add that would be to about right here that'd be just barely enough room to walk around the car so your front and your back without the door leaving open like what I'm doing leaving the door open you really wouldn't be able to walk around it very good so I would say get the 26 foot one some of them come with charcoal filters and some of them don't might want to get the one with charcoal filters see if make sure that that's in the one that you have or you can buy them or you know they're doable I and mean, look at how that one doesn't really fit very good so overall I get a little bit less dirt in the paint um, from using it uh, it's nice because you can see better than you can in the garage for sure um, not that much less dirt really but but what happens is when you deflate this this whole top will come down to the ground and static electricity will pick up all this stuff like that down here like down here all this little bit of leaves and stuff that ends up in here so you'll find that 
you've got to sometimes take and sweep off the ceiling, you know, before you start painting in here. So those are little things to think about when you got it. Yeah, and yes, you will get overspray on the sides of it. I painted something orange in here if you can't figure that out. So overall, those are just some things you can consider when you buy one of these. Um, they, they are worth uh, having. I'm not saying it isn't worth having. It's definitely nice to have that overspray and everything inside one room. Um, and you can see pretty good. But again, you're not going to have the same uh visibility is you doing a spray booth it's just not quite the same you know it, it, i guess you could put lights on the outside of this and it might help a little bit it's kind of a gloomy day this morning when i painted that so um, i did not have the greatest light to do it in when right now it's a little better but you'll also find the other thing it does too is it retains the heat. So the heat will go in through the outside of it and it will stay inside, especially when you have the door shut and it gets really hot in there. I did in the summer, it was like about 80 degrees out and I had a 120 degree panel temp on something I was painting. So. You know, it was like 80 or pushing 90. It was like 85 degrees and I had a 120 degree panel temp because all the heat would go in through the sides and it was heating up my panel temp really hot. And uh, so, you know, it's not a fix all. It doesn't fix everything, but it certainly does make it a whole lot easier to paint with. It's definitely, like I said, if you're doing a couple cars a year or something like that, since you're a hobbyist or something like that, these things are they're worth it. They're worth having. So it's you know the other option is you could buy two 12 foot EV Easy Eps, cover it in Harbor Freight drops, and you could make a spray booth of that. You know they have those four by 12 drops. It'd probably cost you about three hundred dollars or something like that to do that. And then you don't have fans or anything in there at all. And you have Harbor Freight drops, which you can't see through. Okay, and uh, this thing, the, these are, I think, there's ones on eBay for about 800 bucks now. So, just something to consider. 800 to $1,500 somewhere is about what they cost. Anyway, I don't know. You can check around. But just check all those things, like the zipper, the way the door opens and make sure that that's going to work out for you because one that maybe rolls up to the side might be actually harder to deal with than if you roll it up and put those um, things on it all right well, we'll talk to you guys in the next video hope this helps you figure out uh, some of the things to know before you buy it talk to you in the next one please like share and subscribe